been missing seeing all of you and getting together with you. Um, been praying. My concerns have been for the leaders of our country and for the for them to have some clear direction and uh, steps that we need to take going forward. Um, so if you could pray for that this week too. Um, my prayers have been with uh, you and your families and hoping that you're all well and your needs are being met. Um, let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the time that we can come and even though we can't be um, together physically, Father, we can still be together spiritually and we can still meet with you, Father. We can still be close to you in our prayers and in our time studying with you, Father. I pray that you would be with us as we uh, learn this lesson, Father. I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds and help us to grow closer to you during this time. And I just thank you, Father, for your many, many blessings and the things that you do for us. And Father, I pray that you would be with our world leaders as they're um, in our president in this time when he needs to start um, making some different decisions and, and with the leaders of our states so that they can uh, make wise choices for their communities. And I just thank you, Father, for um, your hand in this, Father. I pray that you would continue to be, um, continue to help us to be ever mindful of you and the things of you, Father. And I just thank you and praise you, Father. And Thank you for your time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we've been um, talking about God wants to hear from you no matter what. And then uh, last week we started God wants to answer your prayers no matter what. So last week we talked about one of the reasons uh, for not getting an answer to prayer is that we may not be taking the time to listen for God to respond to our prayers. We also um, talked about being more um, that, wait, let me go back. We also talked about there being more than one way for God to answer our prayers. That he could say yes, he could say maybe, he could say wait. Um, and God can also answer our prayers with a no. So this week I'd like to um, think about, like for all of us to think about how science can be involved in our prayer life. Um, kind of a weird thing to add science to this, but... Um, some of us like the idea that our prayer is, that prayer is being mysterious. We're going to talk, uh, take some time to show how conversations with God might involve real energy. Not the jumping up and down kind of energy, um, but the kind of ener energy that scientists believe can be translated into mass. So we'll be combining uh, some science to religion. This will help us to examine our faith in a new way. In this world, things are in a constant state of change. And we can say this is true more, ne more for us now than ever before. Um, we've had a lot of things going on in our world around us. Um, so when we think of science, um, we're going to think of a couple simple little things of science. We can think that um, if we looked at a rock and this rock is met with a constant flow of running water over it. Over time that rock begins to wear smooth. Its imperfections seem to just go away. Another thing that we can think about is when cool weather um, conditions might uh, meet with, with heat in the sky, it produces a thunderstorm. So it's another type of science. These are just a couple of simple examples of science. We can also say that as humans, we are limited to a three-dimensional perspective. And that's not something that limits God. Understanding that God is not limited in his dimensions can help us have confidence that he not only hears our prayers, but he also reacts to them. It's easier to learn how to speak to God than it is to listen to God. That's why we covered... Um, speaking to God for our first four lessons. However, Jesus did say to us, my sheep will hear my voice. It's not only about praying to him, it is also about hearing his voice. So the last lesson we talked about being still enough that we could hear his voice and that we could listen to him. So it's hard to hear and understand God's reaction if our prayer time is only one-sided. In James 1.5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, ask God, 
who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. We can ask God to give us knowledge and understanding of him. We can ask him for those things, and he will answer us. He gives generously, we just found out in James 1.5. Christians believe heaven is real. It's even more real and more dimensional than earth. Christians also believe there's a connection between heaven and earth, and that is a special one as well as, well as a spiritual one, even though we can't understand all of it. But looking deeper um, can help us understand more about our communication with God. Most of us have heard Einstein's theory of relativity, which is a E equals mc squared. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you do any math. Einstein's theory shows that energy can be converted to mass. And energy is defined as the strength and vitality required for sustained physical and mental activity. A person's physical and mental powers typically as applied to a task or to an activity. And mass is defined as a, co as a coherent, typically large body of, of matter with no definite shape or a large quantity or amount of something. So energy is defined simply as strength and mass is defined um, as a large quantity or amount of something. Those are the simple explanations of it. Um, I'm going to read a verse from Revelation 5, verse 8. And he came and took the scroll from the right hand of the one seated on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of God's people. So since we're talking about prayers, we're going to talk about the prayers of God's people. There is energy in this passage that is converted into mass. The energy was the prayer of the saints. And these were converted to mass in heaven. And we can, we can see this because the, prayers, the prayer had to be contained in the golden bowls. So those prayers became a mass, and they had to be contained. Well, not contained, but put into something, which made it a mass. The prayers have energy, and they are solid. Our prayers are heard by God, and they have mass. The energy that is turned to mass in our prayers can come best from our faith, from our hope, and from love. Jesus even said the greatest commandment is love. Love holds weight with God. We can also gain strength or energy from our faith, hope, and love. From our faith, hope, and love. Sorry, let me read that one more time. We can also gain strength or energy from faith, hope, and love. There is a similarity in strength and energy which produce mass and matter. And matter. <laughs> it can also be said that prayers produce mass. Bringing science into faith can seem weird. Skepticism is the belief that spirituality is all a myth and that science is all fact. S skepticism between religion and science has only been around for about 200 years. Prior to that, there was no split between science and religion. Knowing that there is some science behind spirituality helps increase our faith. Faith that God hears and wants to answer our prayers. So this week, when you pray to God, speak sincerely and start, start uh, giving pauses, times to hear and to listen to God, if you, have, if you haven't already done that. Um, in John 10, 27 and 28... We've been, we've been doing this verse for quite a while in this study, and it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. So let's be the sheep that hear the shepherd's voice. Let's give our prayers energy that come from faith that God hears our prayers. 
hope in the promises of eternity, and love for the needs of others. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. Father, I pray that you would help us to have faith and believe that, that you do answer our prayers. You do hear our prayers, Father. I pray that you would give us hope. Help us to stand fast to the hope that we do have eternity with you, Father. I pray that you would be with us and help us to be ever mindful of the needs of others and to help us to be kind and loving to them. Father, I pray that if there's anyone who has not accepted you, Father, and they don't have that hope of eternity, that they would do it now, Father, that they would give their life to you and that they would um, ask for forgiveness of their sins and believe in you and confess that you are their Lord. And I just thank you, Father. I pray that you would be with us this week and Father, help us to take time to listen to you and to hear your voice. And Father, I pray that each person that's hearing this video, Father, that you would give them um, a way of hearing your voice. Give them time that they can sit and, and, and spend time with you. And Father, I just pray that you would show yourself and reveal yourself to each person in, in a different way and in a mighty way now, Lord. And I just thank you and I... I praise you, and I just am so thankful that I can stand on the promise that, that I am yours and that I will never be snatched away from you. And I just thank you, Father, and I just praise you and give you honor and glory. In Christ's name, amen. So next week, we will um, be looking at the art of prayer. So have a blessed week. Um, if you or your families are in need, please contact the church, leave a message, and we will get back to you. Thank you, and you have a great week. Bye.